G'day everyone, Percy here from toptechskills.com. In this tutorial, I'll take you through the Ansible apt module, which allows you to manage packages on systems that have the apt package manager installed. Apt, also called APT, Advanced Package Tool, is the default package manager on Debian-based operating systems, such as Debian Linux and Ubuntu Linux. As always, there are time codes in the description that will allow you to jump ahead to any section that I cover in the video. And there's also a full in-depth article on Top Tech Skills that accompanies this video, and you'll find a link to that in the description as well. All right, let's jump in. The first thing we'll use the apt module to do is install a package on a system. Imagine we're configuring a server where our application that we're installing requires PHP to be installed. I'm going to create a new task here called install PHP 7.2. For the module, we're going to use apt, and what I need to set is the name and the state of the package. The name is going to be PHP 7.2, and for the state, I'd like to set this to present, which just means installed in Ansible terms. One thing that I always recommend setting for the apt module when you're updating or installing uh, packages is update cache set to true. So this is going to make sure that the apt cache is as up to date as possible when you try to install or update your package. Finally, since we're managing packages on a system, we need root permissions, so I'm going to set become to true. Now let's run this playbook, and if you're familiar with my previous Ansible tutorials, you know that I like to run my playbooks against CentOS 7 and Ubuntu Bionic. And you can see here in our PHP 7.2 task that the CentOS machine has failed immediately. And the reason is that the apt package manager that the apt module uses is not present on CentOS or other Red Hat based Linuxes. On CentOS or other Red Hat based Linuxes, the default package manager is yum. So we have a little problem here that we need to separate these tasks to make sure that it doesn't run on our CentOS machine. There are a couple of solutions to do this and I'll run through the advantages and disadvantages of each. Firstly, what we can do is we can set this hosts key on our play. And what we can do here is we can limit the tasks to run on only hosts of a specific kind. If we go to my inventory hosts file, you can see that I've grouped our CentOS 7 and our Ubuntu Bionic machine underneath these groupings. So we have a CentOS grouping and an Ubuntu grouping based on the operating system. If we were to change this hosts key to Ubuntu, that would make sure to run all the plays in this task section against only the hosts in our Ubuntu group. So that's one way to do it. Let me put that back to star and show you the second way. The second way would be to set a conditional here on this particular task. I'm going to set Ansible OS family is equal to Debian. And what this is going to do is limit just this task to operating systems that are based on Debian, such as Debian Linux and Ubuntu Linux. So this is going to be true for Debian and Ubuntu and false for Red Hat and CentOS, which is what we want. So the advantage and disadvantage of those first two is that this hosts uh, this hosts method requires you to group your hosts. And if you haven't grouped your hosts, that's going to be a little bit difficult. The other thing is that it will apply to all the tasks. And let's say there's only one or two particular tasks that you'd like to limit. This way will limit all of them. And that's that may not be what you want. This method is great if you just like to limit a single task or you don't have very good grouping of your operating systems. The only thing that this needs to run is whether or not Ansible has collected the facts on your system, and this is going to succeed. So those are two methods. The other method that you might suggest if you're fairly familiar with Ansible is to use the package module rather than apt module. Now, if we go over to the documentation here for the package module in Ansible, it's got installs, upgrades, and removes packages using the underlying OS package manager. So this implies that this should be the perfect solution. It should just select whichever package manager is available in the system and succeed. If we run this playbook again, I'm going to demonstrate why I recommend never using the package module ever. So you see here that we expect this to now succeed on both of our hosts, but you can see this is still failing on our CentOS 7 machine. And the reason isn't that it's trying to use apt now, the reason is it's, it's using yum, but we have no package matching PHP 7.2. And this basically demonstrates the reason why I reckon you should never use the package module. The availability and names of a package are very OS specific, right? And if you use the package module, you're not communicating to anyone that's reading your playbook about which operating system you intend this playbook to run against. So I always recommend using the system specific package manager module in Ansible and then using conditionals or grouping to choose which one it runs against. So let's return this to apt. And what I'll do for this section and the subsequent sections is change the hosts to Ubuntu. Now, if I run this playbook again, it's going to limit all of these tasks to run only on our Ubuntu hosts 
and it's going to succeed because we've already installed our PHP 7.2. So it's a very long-winded way of demonstrating how we install a single package, but that's how you do it using the apt module. What if we'd like to install multiple packages on our system using the apt module at the same time? Let's say for instance our PHP application needs to communicate with a MySQL database. We'd also need to install PHP 7.2-MySQL, the MySQL module for PHP. You might be reaching for the loop keyword, but that's not actually the most efficient way to do it with the apt module. The most efficient way would be to pass a list to the name. What we're going to do is convert this first item, PHP 7.2, into the first item in the list, and the second item in the list is going to be PHP 7.2-MySQL. I'll run this playbook against our Ubuntu host, and when it's finished running, I'll confirm that both of those packages were installed at the same time. So our playbook's finished running, and what I'll do is jump onto the Ubuntu instance to make sure that both of the packages were installed. I'll do that with apt list, and then what I'll do is I'll pass PHP 7.2 and PHP 7.2-MySQL. And what that's going to do is list both of those items. PHP 7.2, you can see there, has the installed badge on the right-hand side. PHP 7.2-MySQL also has the installed badge on the right-hand side. So that's how you install multiple items in an efficient way using the apt module. Another thing you might need to do with the apt module is install a specific version of a package on a system. Let's say, for instance, we wanted to install a specific version of PHP. If we use the state present, by default, that's going to install the latest version available on the system. That may not be what we want. So considering that the package has to be available, let's make sure what versions are actually available on our system and choose one of those. What I'm going to do is run apt list php 7.2, and then I'm going to pass the dash a option, which lists all the available versions to apt. So we have only two versions available. We have our 7.2.3 and our 7.2.10. So by default, if we set state present, it's going to select this one. But let's say for instance, we have a good reason why we wanna install 7.2.3. So what I'm going to do is copy this full string here. And to install that version specifically, I'm going to put an equal sign at the end of our package name and then paste that version. Let's run that playbook against our Ubuntu host now and see what happens. So that's running and we'll check back when it's done. So our install PHP 7.2 task has succeeded down here. And let's go over to the system and make sure that our specific version that we wanted is actually installed. I'm gonna run that same command again. And what you'll see is that our 7.2.3 is installed. And it's also given us a helpful little message that it's upgradable to 7.2.10. So that's how you'd install a specific version using the apt module. Let's say you have an older version of a package installed on a system and you'd like to update it to the latest version. Let's check if there are any newer versions of PHP 7.2 available on our system. I'm gonna to go to our Ubuntu host and type in, type in apt list PHP 7.2 and then pass the dash A option to list all available versions. As you can see, we have PHP 7.2.3 installed and apt has helpfully told us that it's upgradable to 7.2.10. Let's update it with the apt module. So by default, when we have state present and there's a newer version of a package available, but the package is already installed, apt module is not going to do anything. Let's run this playbook again, just to confirm that behavior. We have 7.2.3 installed, 7.2.10 is available, but we don't want it to update if we have state present. And that's what it's done. Okay means that it hasn't changed anything. We still have the same version installed. I guarantee you this is the behavior you want by default because you can break production systems if you update a package every time you run an Ansible task against it. So the way that we'd update a package if we know that we can safely update it is by changing the state from present to latest. If we run this playbook now, what we expect to happen is if there's a newer version of PHP 7.2 on the system than the one installed, that we'll update it to the latest version. As you can see here, our task has got changed in there, which implies that we've changed something. If we run the same command there again, apt list PHP 7.2 with a dash A option, you can see that our 7.2.3 version of the package is no longer installed, and we have 7.2.10, the latest version is installed. So that's how you update a package using the apt module by setting the state from present to latest. And I just implore you to make sure that you can update it safely. Don't set it to latest by default, have it set to present by default. The last thing I'll show you how to do is remove a package using the apt module. So we should have a version of PHP 7.2 installed on our system. I'll jump over to our Ubuntu host and run apt list PHP 7.2 with the dash A option. 
You can see here with this little installed badge that we have PHP 7.2.10 installed on our system. Let's remove it using the apt module. The first thing I'll change is just change the name from install PHP 7.2 to remove PHP 7.2. The next thing I'll change is I'll change the state from present to absent. And absent is going to tell Ansible that if a package is installed to remove it, and if it's already removed to do nothing. Now this update cache parameter is redundant if we're removing a package. There's no point checking if there are newer versions of a package available if we're just removing it anyway. So we can remove that, but one thing that I suggest setting if you're ever removing a package using the apt module is auto remove set to true. What the auto remove parameter is going to do is make sure that any dependencies that were installed along with a particular package that are now redundant since we're removing the package, that they will also automatically be removed from the system. And it's just a nice little way to get that done automatically. I'm going to run that playbook now. And what we expect to happen is that PHP 7.2 in all versions is absent from our system. So that playbook's playing now. We'll come back when it's finished. So the playbook is finished running and it says changed here for remove PHP 7.2. I'm going to run back to our Ubuntu host, run the same command as before. And what we can see here now is that we have two versions of PHP 7.2 available and neither of them are installed. So that's how you remove a package using the apt module. Thanks a lot for watching everyone. I really hope you found that tutorial useful. If you have any questions at all about anything you saw in the video, please leave a comment and I'll get back to you as soon as I possibly can. If you enjoyed the video, please like it. And if you'd like to see more content like this, please consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you so much again for watching and I'll see you next time.